Hey guys, so the last time we met, we were planting this little tomato plant, and remember I said it looked innocent, but it was going to get into a monster? Well, it's starting to do that. Look at it in all of its glory. It's beautiful, and it's only been four weeks. Now, the reason I am standing here, even though we are going to be talking about basil, is because this is when you know when it's time to plant your basil, when your tomatoes set fruit. So if you look under here, you will see this beautiful Cherokee purple tomato setting fruit. Look at that, what a specimen. So basil is a hot weather plant. It does not like to be cold. If it gets cold, usually at night, it'll turn black, it'll start to wilt, and it is not gonna be happy. So as soon as your tomatoes set fruit, you know that those nights are gonna be warm enough that it'll be okay to plant your basil. So let me show you my tips for how to care for this awesome plant. Follow me. Okay, so here is my beautiful basil pot. And I'm planting basil in a pot this year because for one, it's a little bit easier to control the amount of water you use. So for the terrible drought that we're having this year, it's gonna do better in a pot. Planting basil in a pot also helps with the drainage because typically you can just use loose potting soil and that's gonna do a lot better than if you plant it in the ground where you may have clay soil and it's not gonna drain as well. So let me show you the different varieties that I have here. I love to mix up the basil. It's so great when you're cooking to have different varieties to choose from for different types of recipes. And for me, I always go with just a couple of good classic Italian varieties. This is really the basil workhorse in the kitchen, things that you're gonna use all summer long. It's also very hardy, as you can see, it seems to be doing quite well here. Then the other type of basil I like to plant is this Thai basil. So this has a really wonderful aroma to it. it almost has like a licorice taste to it. It's great in soups or stir fries. It's also really good on a salad as well. One of the things that you have to notice here about the Thai basil, as pretty as it looks, we actually want to pinch off these flowers. What is actually happening here, because of all of our warm days, the basil is actually trying to complete its life cycle and going to seed, which we don't want. We want it to continue to thrive. So you're just gonna pinch it off, just like that. You could actually put these in a little thing of water, be pretty on your windowsill. But the reason you wanna do that is it'll just help that plant continue to grow and form new leaves. Now Thai basil isn't the only basil that will flower and go to seed. All of the varieties will do that. So anytime you see these little seed clusters forming, see like that, you wanna pinch that off because that is just gonna stimulate more growth of the plant and prevent it from going to seed. Now, if you don't see the little seed clusters forming and your plant doesn't seem to be doing well, you might just go in there and pinch off some of the leaves. That also will stimulate its growth. That's the great thing about basil. It loves to be pinched. Even if you're not gonna use it right away, you can take this, put it in a little plastic bag, pop it in your crisper, and it'll be fine for a few days. And then the other type of basil that I love to grow is this, this lemon basil. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell this. It is the most spectacular smelling basil. It has a wonderful kind of fresh lemon scent, almost like a lemon verbena. I love to use this type of basil anytime I'm making seafood or sometimes I'll put it in a homemade lemonade. It just has such a great taste to it. So I always like to have a little bit of the lemon basil. And then for a little bit of color, I always have some kind of purple basil growing in my basil plot. So my favorite variety is actually a variety called purple ruffles, where it looks kind of like this, but has beautiful ruffled leaves. It's actually featured, I think, in my summer garden tour. You can see what that looks like. They didn't have it this year at my nursery, so I'm just going with the plain purple basil, which is just as beautiful, don't get me wrong. And what's nice about the purple basil, as opposed to the green basil, is it's similar, but has a little bit more of an earthy flavor to it, where the regular green basil has more of sort of a fresh, almost like anise flavor to it. They're really great to use in combination because they'll just add great color to any tomato salad you're making or bruschetta. They're really great to have on hand to mix and match. And lastly, I'm experimenting this year with a new type of variety, cinnamon basil. I know, who knew? It has the most spectacular fragrance to it. When you pinch the leaves, and anytime you want herbs to kind of be more fragrant, just give the leaves a little pinch like this and ruffle, and that will release all of its aroma. Mm, and it smells like basil, but then has this really interesting warming cinnamon flavor. I was thinking of maybe using it sprinkled on top of some strawberries or on ice cream. I thought it could be interesting. And lastly, basil does like its water, so it does need to be watered at least every day, just a little bit to make sure that that soil is moist, and then to conserve that moisture, make sure that you also mulch your pot so that you're making sure that none of that moisture is evaporating. Now, once your tomatoes start ripening and all of your basil is flourishing, you're gonna need a great recipe to put all this produce to work. And for that, you can click the annotation and head on over to my food channel, where I'll show you how to make a fantastic tomato basil salad that comes together in less than 15 minutes. I'll see you over there.
拜。